everyone, I'm Heather. Welcome back to my week by week pregnancy journal. If this is your first time here, I'll be talking about absolutely everything that happened to me during week 32 of my first pregnancy. Check out the description area for a quick breakdown of this video if you just want to skip around to a certain topic or see how my bump is progressing. So this week was a bit emotional. At 32 and a half weeks, we had our ultrasound and we found out that the baby is sitting breech. Honestly, if I did this video the day that we found out, I probably, you know, it would have just been a big cry fest, but I have had a few days to digest it. So I have picked my head up and put it back on my shoulders and I am going to be able to talk to you about everything that I felt when we found out that the baby was breech, how our ultrasound went, and much more. And I believe that it's better for you that I waited a couple days to actually record this because it would have been a whole mess of just me trying to figure out my feelings. So stay tuned and I'll get into all of that a little bit later. But first off, how big is the baby? This week the baby's about 16.5 inches and about three and a half to four pounds, which is the size of a head of lettuce. Development this week, all the baby's organs are actually now developed except for the lungs. They still have a little more maturing to do and chances of survival if the baby is born this week are actually really great. How am I feeling thoughts wise? I feel like actually now it's happening faster than I felt before. Like oh shit, countdown is on. Not that it's like moving faster, it's just the realization of how many weeks are left is like, whew, we're in the single digits and it's countdown time. Also, I've noticed when I look down, I can't see my feet anymore. I kind of have to lean forward and look over my belly to see my toes. Symptoms this week, definitely back aches, or should I say stabbing back pains? I think that they're just they come back and it's very hard to you know get out of bed sometimes I get that stabbing pain and it is shooting up to like an eight or nine on the pain scale and it's just very painful and when my husband lifts my leg a certain way it just kind of zings that pain again so long story short I made an appointment back with the chiropractor also I'm just very tired I have my acid reflux still and I've noticed that the pigment around my areolas and their nipples area has gotten darker like a darker brown you know I'm obviously Caucasian and it's just a darker color that has ever been on my body <laughs> cravings this week cold tomatoes it has to be cold with salt and pepper also I was craving this thing it's called three bean or four bean salad my work used to have it but they haven't had it in a few days so I've still kind of been craving that and I feel like soon enough I'm gonna have to go on a hunt for it cold salad I think maybe the heat has to do with all wanting all of these cold things and then at some point I really was craving a glass of wine for a second I think just working with my husband trying to get the nursery together made me kind of just want a glass of wine but I did not have a glass one just saying it was a craving <laughs> just a strong craving for vinegar is back I feel like if I came across that three bean salad it's made it's like vinegary based um, like pickled bean salad I felt like I would have drank the whole jar one thing I did get is that gardenia pickled vegetables it's kind of like tangy I don't know it's got olives in it cauliflower carrots all pickled it in a jar so I got that because I couldn't find the three bean salad and that was good along with chocolate also. How my body has changed this week, I'm up about 19 pounds since the start of pregnancy and my waist has gained about 10 inches. How am I feeling emotionally? I'm just feeling very emotional after my OB ultrasound uh, appointment and then I just feel like I'm having bad dreams also because I'm just a bit stressed out. So things we did this week, I'm gonna try and go in order from the beginning of the week till now. We started off at the beginning of the week, I did yard work with my husband. We were very active outside. I was just, you know, picking up sticks and doing a lot. It wasn't too hot out. I was really paying attention to that because it is summer right now. After doing all of that, a couple days later, that's when I noticed the back pain. So I just attributed it to being outside and being active, doing all of that, bending over. We were picking up sticks. We had a bonfire to just burn all those sticks from the giant trees in our yard that just litter them all over the ground. After a few days, that pain didn't go away because I thought after I would rest and then, you know, things would kind of get better and it never did. So that's where I'm at. I thought that I didn't have to go to the chiropractor again, but now I am like, okay, maybe this is somewhat pregnancy related, somewhat related to like the hard work that I did out in the yard. And um, yeah, but it was fun getting outside and just being active. I took my time. I was definitely moving a lot slower than normal, but it was, you know, 
we had a big bonfire one of the nights and I got this awesome photo of me standing with my belly and the fire behind me. I'll probably keep that forever. We always have bonfires like that just to clean up our yard. So all of the furniture is in the baby's room, like the big items, so we chose a final room arrangement. We finally agreed. Once we did that and knew where everything was gonna go, we gave it a one, one more like deep clean with the floor cleaner. We vacuumed the rugs and we put everything in the places that it should be in, along with having a baby gate to kind of keep our dog out and keep the tumbleweeds of hair maintained outside of the room. Now we're like one step closer to finishing the nursery. But I think that's when I got that wine craving because it was like, yay, we accomplished something. It took a while and I wanted to celebrate. <laughs> Another thing that I got this week, I actually got it on the Facebook yard sale site. So it's somebody that purchased it and was just trying to get rid of it. And it was more than half price. I got it from this girl from, for 25 bucks. And cause it was like something I didn't need, but I wanted. And especially cause I had some back pain. I wanted to try a different position to lay to relieve that back pain or make me feel better. It's this cozy bump. And I'm sure everybody sees this floating around on the internet but it's the thing that you lay on your belly with. So you're able to lay it on the floor and I'm like, I can lay outside. Did you just get my belly hanging out? <laughs> <laughs> this shirt doesn't fit me anymore. <laughs> you actually get on here and you put your bump right in the hole and you can lay. And it's actually very comfortable. Um, I didn't really think that I needed something like this until about this point of pregnancy before it was kind of just like, ah, you could do without. But, you know, I think as you start to get more uncomfortable, you start looking for things to purchase. But I think once you start getting bigger, you start looking for things to purchase to make you more comfortable. Do I think it's worth $75? I don't know. But if you can find it, you know, as a hand-me-down from somebody else that you, that's reliable. She had it listed as a non-smoking home. It's very clean and it was somebody from around my neighborhood. So I feel like I got lucky finding it for $25, but you know, check it out. Look for one. If you can find it for a decent price, it's fun to have. <laughs> my husband was like, oh my God, another blow up thing. Another thing. Another thing. <laughs> lots of things. <laughs> lots of, lots of things. Add it to the pillow collection. The pillow collection, yeah. So the main point I think of this video is that we had our growth ultrasound, which was scheduled because we had the episode of bleeding. To make sure everything was okay and he was growing well, we said okay to this growth ultrasound. They gave us the option of getting it in two weeks, like two weeks from the next appointment or waiting till four weeks from the appointment that they offered it to us. So we did it earlier. We had the ultrasound. We're excited. Of course, we wanted to know if he's growing okay. And then second exciting thing is, oh my gosh, we're gonna get to see his face again. I hope his hands aren't blocking his face, which they were. So his hands were blocking his face. We didn't really get to see a good image of his face, which is fine because I think that it'll be more of a surprise when he's born. And that's totally fine because the 20 week ultrasound, we got a very clear picture of his little Little tiny face leaves more up for surprise along with the color of his hair but as soon as she put the probe down she put it on the top of my stomach right here and that is what we have been thinking the whole time was his butt we've been rubbing and patting saying oh you're a little hiney turns out that that's his head there's two screens in the office there's one that the ultrasound tech works on right here and then there's one up on in the corner for the spouse to look at for you to be able to see as you're laying flat and he was actually videotaping the one screen and I said Joe look where his head's at and he's like oh yeah I know how cool and I'm like no turn around and look where his head's at and he saw that the probe was right here and throughout the week he was always saying what if it's his head what if it's his head and I'm like no it's his butt like I can tell by the way the movements are so now I'm just like completely thrown off that was right when the ultrasound started so I feel like and my husband brought this to my attention too that if he feels like once I found that out I was just not paying attention to anything else that was going on with the ultrasound. I was just so thrown off by the fact that he was breech and I was processing it and I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't 
believe it. I can't believe that's his head. I can't believe that's his head. I can't believe I've been poking his head. Then I poke his eyes out and all these thoughts are just going through my mind. And what's next? Cause I know what's next. He needs to turn. And if he doesn't turn, then you know, things change. Along with that, they didn't even make a note on the screen that said breach. That was just emotional. I didn't get emotional while we were in the ultrasound, but she said oh, everything was growing fine. And she confirmed that the little feelings that I was feeling on the side over here that I mentioned in other videos, it was his feet and his hands. So it was his head, his hands up near his face, and then his body, his like um, back was along the left side, and his feet came up to the right side, and his feet were kind of like over here near his hands. So I said, what way would he turn if he, if he does turn? So they said he, he would turn in a counterclockwise way so that his head goes from the top here down and around and ends up in my pelvic area. So then I would expect that I'd be feeling kicks and stuff over on the left side rather than the right side. So now that's in my head. I'm like, okay, well, I'll look out for that. Anyway, long story short, the ultrasound ended. We had to go back into the waiting room and wait for our OB appointment. We were able to schedule them both on the same day. Waiting for that, talking it out with my husband, getting emotional in the waiting room, got into the OB appointment. The midwife came in this was one that we actually hadn't met with before she was very nice awesome had a student with her in my head I feel like I prefer maybe not to have a student with things like this because I would rather that one-on-one -on -one interaction but everybody's different she didn't do anything wrong it's just I had a lot of emotions running through me and I wanted to handle that with one person rather than being monging it between two people either way they were both very knowledgeable the midwife came in and I guess they made an error with the type up and they wrote vertex so if it says vertex, that means your baby is in the correct position with head down in your pelvis and butt up. Right off the bat, she was like, everything's great. And I'm like, no, everything's not great. The baby's breech. And she's like, no, it says right here, vertex. So I said, well, we know when she wrote it on the screen, it said clear B-R-E-E-C-H, so it was breach. So then they went into education about what's gonna happen next if your baby is breech and said that they would make sure that they would correct that right away on the paperwork. So what's the plan is that it's early. You have time for the baby to turn. I get it, but hearing that your plan could be interfered with something that you didn't even think of, especially because at her 20 week ultrasound, the baby's head was down. She had to like push it out of the way. I just assumed the baby stayed that way. I know they're tiny and they move a lot. So it's movements that you don't even feel, or maybe it happens in nighttime. I guess my overall birth plan didn't even consider the fact of maybe having a C-section or not even having a vaginal delivery. So I think that's the most upsetting thing to me. And I'll explain. So the process would be, we had this appointment, our, we're at every two weeks that we're seeing the midwives. Our next two week appointment will be with the midwife and she will feel around it. I believe it's called the Leopold's maneuver where you feel around and you try and feel what the baby's position is. From there, I thought, but talking with my husband uh, now we're unsure, I thought from there if she thinks the head's down then we don't have to have an ultrasound. He thinks that the next week, like four weeks from our last appointment would be scheduled another ultrasound along with an appointment with the doctor who's great at turning babies which is called ECV which is external cephalic version actually putting gel all over your belly and turning the baby manually just in case so we would have that appointment with the ultrasound and then the next with this doctor to explain to us and see if we would like to set an appointment to do the ECV which would happen at 37 weeks. We're at our 32 week appointment. Our 34 week would be a check by just feeling and then our 36 would be an ultrasound along with talking to the doctor about if we wanted to do the ECV. And then that next week or so, we would schedule an appointment to have that done if the baby does not decide to turn on his own. What they had told us was there's many things that we can do to encourage the baby to turn naturally. So a lot of them are on this website called spinningbabies.com. It's a lot of exercises, inversions, kind of like hanging off the couch with your pelvis higher than your body. So you do that for a certain amount of time and then you invert yourself and you lay there for like 15 or 20 minutes to kind of encourage the baby, baby's bum to come out of your pelvic area 
and give them more room to turn. Another thing, since I am going back to the chiropractor, the chiropractor can do this other technique called the Webster technique, and it has to do with realigning your pelvic bones and your sacrum and all of that to kind of allow the baby to turn. I personally feel that I believe that going back to the chiropractor and doing that technique is my best bet. Considering that I have scoliosis, everything is twisted up and turned, so I feel that that's something that we can do. There's also options of acupuncture and many other things that people have been recommending throughout the week that I've talked to and I'll just kind of like put them in the links below. With that being said, I made it back to the chiropractor. She did the Webster technique. She asked me how everything was going. I told her how stressed out I've been. We got into things. It was the same amount of time for the appointment. She just had me lay on the pillow with the belly cut out and the boobs cut out and she worked on my sacrum there's something with like a drop table so where she, when she presses part of the table drops and I guess with that movement it helps realign your sacrum and also had me lay on my back she did my normal adjustments whenever she cracked my back and w when she did the one side after doing the sacrum work I felt him like shift from down low to up in my rib when I turned from one side to the other so I'm like whoa whoa and then you could see him up really high in my belly so we both kind of were like well that's a great sign in my head I'm like well, maybe his butt just came out of my pelvis and now he's you know in a more optimal position for turning his little butt just hoping that that's what happened there then she had me lay on my back and she said find your pubic symphysis so I found my pubic bone and she worked right there and that's to either side and she said that's where the round ligament is so she applied pressure she said one side obviously she was like in part of my term like it's like you know squishier and then the other side was just very tight so she applied pressure in a certain way to kind of like relieve that tension and hopefully that also works with this Webster technique to just open everything up and you know let your hips give the baby more room to turn. So that is done. I made another appointment for a week after. I kept saying are you sure you don't want to see me twice a week? She said let's stick with once a week because I guess she just really felt that once a week would be good. So I have a follow-up with her a week from now. Another thing is taking a bath. So I have not taken a bath since pregnancy begun because I read all these things about your body temperature and not wanting it to go over a certain amount and being that this is my first baby I was just scared so I didn't want to chance anything I didn't want to bring my core temperature up too high because I like really warm baths and I just have been kind of avoiding it but I got into the bathtub I was like perfect because we had our baby shower and we got the baby thermometer for the bathtub so I was like perfect well I'll just use that and we kind of like crept the temperature up in the bathtub till it got to about 100 degrees which was still warm enough for me and it was comfortable one of the things that my husband read was to take a bath so that it's warm down in your lower pelvis then put ice or a bag of frozen vegetables on the top to kind of scare him away from that and want to go towards the warmth which would be turning so we did that that was it felt really good to take a bath though so i think i'm going to be obsessed with taking baths from now on another thing is my husband's just really trying to encourage me to do these exercises the one was kneeling on my knees in the bed with my head down and my pelvis up higher and he said that talking down low will encourage the baby to come towards his voice along with shining a light down there so whatever to make him happy so i have a funny video of that maybe if i cannot put that in this video to the doctors and they said your head was up high and your mom freaked out and said oh, oh no why <laughs> I said I told you so and I said we've been hitting him on the head the whole time but yes we did because we thought it was your butt Oh, flip, <laughs> baby boy, gotta flip, cause your mom's gonna freak out. Flip, baby boy, you gotta flip, because your mom is gonna freak out. So the reason I'm playing to your butt <laughs> and your mom's butt is because your breach. We gotta get your head in the right space 
You gotta come towards me. <laughs> this is the way to the world of the unknown. <laughs> but everything has just been very stressful. I know that my husband wants to help. He didn't like seeing me upset for one and just wants to do everything that he can to help encourage the baby to turn but it's just stressful another exciting thing this week on the good side i guess was our childbirth classes that we signed up for started on wednesday so it's from 7 to 9 p.m and it's at our ob office and it's taught by one of the midwives some of the things that they cover during the classes it says the goal of the class is to prepare couples for a natural safe and empowering birth so the topics that they'll be going over over the next five or six weeks would be overview of labor and birth, comfort measures for labor pain, informed choices, pain medications, pain medication preferences, common complications, a tour of the hospital, and then they would go over the first six weeks at home with baby. And the cost of this was $150 per couple and we paid that on the first day that we went to do the class. My husband and I were really excited to do these classes because I've been teaching him a lot, but we were excited to go to a class, for one, be around other pregnant couples that were there for the same reason, and then just see it from a different perspective. Like, I learned it in nursing school. I'm just teaching my husband anything that I can that I come across. I say something and he's like, what do you mean? What does that mean? And then we, you know, I'm able to explain it to him a little further. But coming from a midwife and having her just explain it in simple terms, I'm just excited for that. The first class was amazing. There was about 10 couples. So she went around and we introduced ourselves. We said our name, what our due date was, and something that we were scared about something like a thought about labor like what comes to mind or like what is pain in your eyes when it came for, for us this was the day after we found out the baby was breached so obviously I said you know and this is still fresh in my head but we just found out that the baby's head is up so I got emotional pregnancy hormones you know and it was just very fresh for me so I was crying and I just kept saying I'm just crying because it's just so fresh in my head and and I'm still processing it and they felt and for us both and wished that you know good vibes for the baby to turn and of course said that we had time so that that was a crazy way of introducing myself a little cry tears but all in all uh, everybody was very supportive and encouraging as to you know there's time there's still time for the baby to turn and then the rest of the class we kind of just went over general labor and what was going to happen and I'm very proud of my husband because they had you know two photos and they said what are the difference what's the difference between these photos who's likely to um, you know deliver first and when she was pointing out things you know I answered one of the questions and then she was like what's this white area here and my husband was like the mucus plug <laughs> and all the other guys in the class looked at him like dude what the heck? <laughs> so I was like, good job, babe. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> Other things this week, I did reach out again to the maternity ph photographer. She said that she would do a combination of, we would do a maternity shoot with her and a newborn shoot once the baby arrives for a certain price. And I thought that was good and we would get USB with the photos but she's obviously very busy and we're very lax with you know meeting up so eventually in the next week or so I want to solidify a date to set a maternity shoot. They did say that that happens around 12, 36 to 38 weeks I believe or 34 to 38 weeks so we're approaching that time and hopefully we can set a date with her. If not we'll go in the backyard and I'll put a little dress on and my husband will take pictures of me. <laughs> But it would be nice to have professional photos, you know, because the last time that we got professional photos was our wedding and engagement photo shoot. I'm looking forward to that. And also this week, I have really noticed that my pants at work are just a little too tight now around my lower, my hip pelvic area. I never even considered it until we found out that the baby is breached. Another few things that they said is, you know, the one of the midwives said, you, basically sit like a dude have your knees spread open wide and your pelvis open don't mind my belly hanging out but she said just sit like this when you're in your chair good posture so I'm like it's kind of hard to sit like that and my pants are just kind of like cutting into the lower area of my belly so I was at work and I was like well let me I was talking to one of the other nurses and I just took my scissors and I cut my pants but I left the string but I cut a little V because we were talking about well you could just turn your normal pants into maternity pants 
by cutting them and adding some stretchy fabric with the sewing machine. So I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. But I just feel that even if I did that, they would just still be a little uncomfortable in the wrong places. So I'm going to figure out where I can get maybe a pair of maternity pants because at this point there's not that much time left for me to have to work so why would I buy a ton of maternity pants now? I figure I could just get one or two and wash them every other day and we'll see. <laughs> I could have did that. I could have got the fabric. We could have did that months ago. Yeah, but it didn't just, start bothering me until now. Yeah, I guess so. What's comforting to me, definitely just sitting in the nursery, sitting in my glider chair and, you know, holding my belly and thinking to the baby, leaving the lights off and just kind of like rocking and thinking, kind of like meditating, I guess, and saying, you gotta turn into a man. I just feel that that time just sitting and thinking could be a positive thing also. Thoughts and questions this week, uh, I can kind of tell you what my general birth plan was. In our minds, I never considered C-section. I just thought everything would go normally as planned because I haven't had any complications thus far. Not that anything is a complication at all yet. It's just, you know, the baby's not in the optimal position. But I just figured I would go into labor. We would head to the hospital. I don't want to call it a birth plan, but my birth preferences would be to not have an epidural. I would like to know when the window is that when my last amount of time that I can have it for somebody to offer it to me and, and see how I'm feeling. But I'd like to go the no pain medication route. I'm not a big pain medication taker. I don't even like to take Tylenol as of right now. So I just feel like my mom did it, his mom did it. I have a lot of friends that ended up doing it. And I think once you get to a certain point, you're just at that point already and you're almost there. So you just stick it out with great encouragement. That's what the midwives say that they're, they're there for is to encourage you to keep going. And you know, cause things change once you get an epidural. You're not allowed to walk around. You don't know how you're gonna react to it, uh, how the baby's gonna react to it. Yeah. So no pain medication or any kind of epidural was my plan and to just push naturally. The main thing was to just enjoy the labor process to see how it goes. Like, is my water going to break? How the contractions start? Getting into the bathtub, walking around the hospital to soothe myself, using the balls at the, the hospital to sit on to just work through the contractions. Just the whole process of labor and to think that now if we had to have a scheduled c-section i would be missing out on that whole process it's not that i'd be afraid of having a c-section it was just what i would be missing out on and that's what i think made me most emotional the more that i think about it because i've had a few days to process it and now I'm trying to do this video is that you know in the end we just want a healthy baby and the baby to be out safely. So I know that people can deliver breach. My office does not. So, and I'm okay with that because I don't want to even consider the complications of having a baby come out the way that it's not supposed to. I would honestly rather a C-section than a breach delivery if I had the choice. I don't know I say that now because your mind just keeps jumping around from thing to thing as you're processing this all. But in my hopes, I hope that it turns and I have a natural progression of labor and I'm able to experience the whole thing along with my husband by my side supporting me. Right, and your health too. It's yeah. like the baby's health and your health. Yeah. A couple other things that I thought that would be my birth plan is obviously because I'm scared, I was like, I want them to cut me before I tear and no matter what the situation, but the more that I look into it and even talking to the midwives, it's actually worse to have the episiotomy where they cut you because it's more painful healing and it's just unnatural and there's a lot of risks with it. You could look that up and, and read about it, but if you do the proper techniques and stuff like that, you can do perineal massage. It can really decrease the tear factor and if you're just pushing the correct way, and just listening to your body and not overdoing it. Everybody tears a little bit and they said that's normal and that actually heals better and it's less painful. I think I've changed my mind about the whole, I want an episiotomy, just know that to cut me before I tear from my butthole to my badge and the likelihood of that happening, I know it does happen to people, but they said the likelihood of that is less than, than I'm putting it up in my head to be. Usually it's just a small tear and as you're pushing, you probably won't even feel it because of all the pressure. The other things along with the birth preferences is I'd like to not, if I do get the chance to deliver vaginally, I'd like to not be laying on my back. And I even spoke with the midwives about this. It's like they tell you all the whole pregnancy not to lay on your back. So why would you deliver laying on your back? And she even said, well, it's 
convenient. It's convenient for the, the caretakers that are delivering your baby, but there's other options that you could deliver standing up, squatting, sitting on a ball, lying on your side with your leg up, pushing. There's so many other ways that you could deliver your baby vaginally rather than laying on your back, which is just the most convenient for everybody else. But again, see how your situation goes. If that works out better for whoever's getting your baby out safely, then that's maybe what you do. I'd like to try something else other than laying on my back. Obviously breastfeeding, I prefer to breastfeed. I hope that everything is in my favor and I am able to breastfeed my baby. I, If all fails, I have no problem giving formula to my baby, but my preference is to breastfeed as long as I can and just breastfeed. Sometimes you don't have enough milk supply and other things can happen, so uh, we'll see how that goes, but I would love to breastfeed. Couple other things, I gave my mom and his mom the option of being in the delivery room, so we'll see how it all progresses as it comes, but you know, his mom said that she doesn't have to be there. She's okay with not being in the delivery room when the baby comes out. Some people are just not, you know, into that. Uh, my mom wants to be there every step of the way because she's my mom and she's all up in my business. No, <laughs> but my mom would like to be right up in there with me, so I gave her that option and she said, of course, so we'll see. And then and along with my one friend that I talked about this with and she said that she would love to be there so I would love for her to be there too so it would be my husband and then two other people we'll see how it all goes and I'll talk to them about it when it gets closer and if it works out that would be awesome things I'm scared about I'm just scared if the baby doesn't flip I guess that gets me a little nervous obviously I've been talking about that this whole video how has my husband been this week he started reading his book it's called the birth partner or I think so this is the book that my husband started reading. It's called The Birth Partner, and it's basically everything that you need to know to be a good, what, you tell me. The book is meant for the partner. So me, uh, so the husband, um, the du a doula, partner is gonna be by the pregnant woman's side giving birth. So it's very informative. And I guess how to just like deal with certain situations. Yeah, like breach, when we found out it was breach, that's what made me start it, so starting to, read all the, about the positions in there and then more online but and then it's cool it's got like checklists for your baby bag to bring to the hospital mother for the postpartum period it's just very highly recommended by the midwives so thanks again for watching my video that's my recap of week 32 don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and click that little bell for notifications of when i post my next video and now let's take a look at how my bump is progressing all right, so this is my bump for week 32, day one of week 33. Yeah.